how to create images in mid-journey that then you can use to create custom Canva frames. That is what I'm going to teach you in this video. This video will be particularly useful for the PLR sellers, MRR sellers, and just all around someone who wants to create custom Canva frames and sell them with a commercial license. Why is this important? Because as many clip art that you can find out there with PLR license and things like that, you don't wanna be using someone else's creation to create something of your own that then you can pass with a commercial license. I hope that's making sense. A lot of clipper artists don't let you use their clip art to turn it into something else and then pass it off as your own. And that totally makes sense. What you can do, as of right now, is to go to Midjourney, create an image, and then turn it into something else. In this case, Canva frames. Hello there, I'm Yatsia, and I am the creator of OnlineTemplateShop.com. I've been creating and selling Canva templates for four plus years and doing this online business thing for, I don't know, six or seven by now. So if you're looking to learn how to create planners, journals, Canva templates, anything PLR, MRR, I am your person. Make sure to subscribe and come back for a new video. This particular tutorial is part of a six video series that will be released during the month of May 2024. So make sure to check the description below for all the links that you need for other videos. This is video number two which means that there's a previous video where I show you two quick and easy ways to create custom Canva frames using Canva and Photopy, which both are free. So make sure to check that out before you continue with this video. Now, let's go ahead. We're going to start on mid journey because I wanted to show you the style of image that we're going to create. It's more like a silhouette kind of vector style. It's not perfect, but we're going to fix it in Canva. So the first thing we're going to do is we need to come up with our prompt. And this is a style prompt that I have come up with. It works very well for me. So basically first I put what I want. So in this case, I want a full body pregnant woman. I want it in silhouette style, which is what you are seeing here. And I'm going to describe a little bit more what I want, and not just a silhouette, but also I want an all black vector style. And of course I want it on a white background because it is a lot easier to edit and manipulate in Canva, which is our next step. Now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go ahead and copy this prompt. I'm going to come back to mid journey and I'm going to type, imagine I'm going to paste that prompt. I'm going to hit enter and jump to present. That way I go all the way down. There we go. And now we're gonna wait for it to generate. Quickly, I'm going to go to midjourney.com, log in, go to archive, which you can see here on the left side. Now I'm going to hold down the shift key and I'm going to click on all of these images. And now I'm going to hit download here at the bottom to download those images to my computer. Then I'm going to go to Canva. I have a 500 by 500 pixel canvas here. Um, I usually I do around 2000 by 2000, but in this case, I don't need huge images. That's why I'm using this size. Any square image would do really. So I have these images here. I'm going to go ahead and drag them into Canva. I have placed one image per page, as you can see here. Now, what I like to do is to stretch the image to be able to fill the entire space. You can do this or you can skip it. It depends on what you want. If you do the 2000 by 2000, that is a huge page size. So you probably don't need to do this, but because I'm doing 500 by 500, I want to make sure that this image is as big as I can get it. So that's why I'm doing this. Another option that you can do here directly on mid journey it's to go ahead, ahead and upscale the images that you want. You can click um, you want to upscale number one, and then it'll give you these options here at the bottom. You can do upscale um, 
subtle or creative. I usually do subtle because I just want to make the image a little bit bigger. Another thing that you can do is back here on your midjourney.com account, click on the image that you want and you'll have those options here on the right bottom side. You can go ahead and do the same thing. You can do, again, just click creative here and it'll work on that. Let's go back to archive and you can see it's generating here at the top. So you can do it um, here or you can do it in the discord server itself. There's no difference. It's just, it just depends on what your workflow looks like and it'll do the same thing. So back on Canva, once you have decided if you want to upscale over there or not, um, what we're going to do is select the image, then click on edit photo. And we're going to do the background remover because it has like a beigey back, um, background on there. It looks pretty good. And now I'm going to click here to go in here and clean up this image a little bit. Um, let me see. This hand right here looks a little bit creepy. This hand, what I want to do really is to erase it. So I'm going to select erase over here and the brush size, you can make it bigger or smaller over here. So I really just want to cut all of this. There you go. And we can make it a little bit bigger to get a lot more detail and the brush size can be smaller so we can get a lot more detail and we can smooth it out a lot better. This does take a little bit of time. If you are great with like Photoshop and things like that, you can do this on Photoshop and I'm sure it'll be a lot easier and a lot faster, but I am not. So I use Canva and that way I am working in one uh, place at a time. Let me see. I think that's pretty good. I think that's good. I can, it could smooth out this. It doesn't really bother me. I think it'll be good. Probably this little thing here. Um, it'll be good for the final product. Okay, perfect. So now we're going to come out of here. And now what we're going to do, go to this um, effect right here that says duo tone. You can select any of them. It doesn't matter. I usually do cherry, but again, it doesn't matter. All we want to do is bring this all the way to black, the highlights, and then the shadows again all the way to black to make that image as black as we can get it and prepare it perfectly for photo B. Now, you don't necessarily have to do this. I like to do it to make sure there's no errors. Um, an image that is originally this dark, it'll work very well um, as well. So this one over here, again, I'm going to select the image edit photo, background remover, it'll do what it needs to do. Then we're going to click again to come in here. We're going to zoom in. It looks pretty good. I don't think I want to um, see, we can even see the belly button. <laughs> I want to leave that there. Um, I think that this finger's a little bit awkward. Um, I don't know. I think I would remove that too. Should we do it? Let, let's do it just for the sake of the video. Let's go ahead and do it. And we need to be very, very careful with removing this going by the silhouette of the belly. This brush size needs to be a lot smaller so we can remove all of this. Perfect. I think that looks pretty good and smooth enough. Um, let's check the top. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Okay. Yeah, I'm happy with the results. So I'm going to go back and again, do a tone cherry or any of them really bring it back to black. It's just cherry is part of my workflow. Like I already know <laughs> that's what I do. So my brain goes to that one. Now we have two more to do. And once we're done, um, we'll go to photo P. By the way, another thing that you can do just so you're not clicking and editing every single image with all of those clicks, you click on one that is ready. This one is ready for me. So I'm going to go over here and click on 
this um, paintbrush and this is the copy style paintbrush. Then I'm going to go to the image that I still have not edited, which this one would be that and I'm going to click on it. And now whatever I did to this one, it'll be copied to this one. That's why I, that way I don't have to go, you know, go to Duotone and do all of those clicks. Um, and that's it. All of the images are ready. Now we're getting ready to export. So what I'm going to do, click share, download. We're going to do PNG, transparent background, all pages, and we're going to download. And then we're going to go to Photopea and we're going to import those images. I have all my images ready, select, and we're going to drag them on here. And as you can see here at the top left corner, we have all images open. I'm going to start with number one. Let me make it a little bit bigger. There we go. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use method number one that I showed you on video number one of this Canva frames series. Okay, so now we are ready to start working on this. You're going to hold down the command key on your keyboard. You're going to go ahead and double click on this image, maybe a little too fast. Let me close this. There we are. And then you're going to double click until the select pixels um, message is over here at the top. Then you're going to click on paths. You're going to come all the way down here to this icon that says selection to path. And you're going to click on that. Then you're going to notice this blue um, dots all over the image. It means that you did it right. So now go to layer, vector mask, current path, and you're done. So now you're going to export. So we're going to click on file. You're going to export as a PDF. You're going to save it to your computer. Go to Canva, drag in that PDF, and it takes just a few seconds to upload. Click on that PDF and the way you know it worked is you're going to right click, detach image and delete that image. And there you go. Now you have your Canva frame in there. You can try it out by using some videos. So I'm going to drag a video inside that frame. Look how pretty that looks. Let me drag in this video. That looks beautiful. I wonder what this one would look like in there. You can put videos, you can put photos as well. Search for pink and we have this. Um, it's workable. I don't like it, but it's workable. We can, we can make it work. All the flowers that look so pretty. And that's it. That's how you know it worked. And that's how you can use mid journey to create custom Canva frames that you can sell. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. Make sure to check out the description box to find the link to the previous video and the link to the playlist for the rest of the videos that accompany this tutorial series on Canva frames. And if you have any questions, leave a comment down below. I am happy to answer any questions or create any other videos that will clarify anything that you did not understand from this series. Thank you for watching and I will see you on the next one.